How's it going guys? <clears throat> Welcome back to my C-Sharp programming series. Today we are going to be looking at constructors of a class and auto-implemented properties. Um, so notice in my last video we had our get and set accessors um, relating to the course name. Um, I have that commented out and this can be easily replaced. Um, in my previous version the gradebook had a private course name instance variable and the public course name property to um, basically enable the code to access the course name. And when you look at the definition of the course name property, the get and uh, get accessor uh, returns the private instance variable course name's value, and the set accessor basically assigns a value to the instance variable. Um, C# -sharp provides automatically implemented properties and with these kind of properties the compiler automatically creates a private instance variable and the get and set accessors for returning and modifying the private instance variable. So this gives you the benefits of having a property but being able to implement the property um, in an easier little more efficient way. If you later decide to implement other logic in the get or set accessors you can basically just re-implement the property as shown um, as I did in my previous program. So here, this was the way I had it done before. I commented that out. We basically deleted, took out the private variable, and just added the public string course name with get and set. This basically will replace this entire block of code and do the exact same thing. And I have also added a constructor. Um, basically a constructor is, is able to initialize an object with a value. It will build it basically um, whenever it's, it's declared and created. So C# -sharp requires a constructor call for every object that is created. Excuse me, the new operator calls the class's constructor to perform the initialization. If the constructor call is indicated by the class name, we follow that by the parentheses. So for example, here <clears throat> um, we declare a uh, gradebook constructor and here we're using, when we create the new um, gradebook book one, we're going to give it the default value of physics and we're doing the same thing with book two and English. The compiler does provide a public default constructor with no parameters in any class that does not explicitly define a constructor. So every class does have a constructor whether you um, implement it yourself or not. But the default constructor does not modify the default values of the instance variables like we're doing here. So basically we are using our gradebook class and we have changed our um, get and set block of code with um, one line of code here. We've added the constructor and the print function is the same basically outputs to the console whatever the course name is and we can also read data into instead of having to initialize it let's say we wanted to um, create a gradebook object call it book three new gradebook we can also just put empty parentheses empty parentheses and then if we try to output gradebook three it will be blank or we can prompt the user to enter something and then store that information later on in book three so let's go ahead run this Oh, it's because we don't have a, we need to um, initialize it with the value. It won't let me uh, create, when we define the constructor, we have to um, give it a value here. I think that should let me, yeah, cause that'll be null. And we can always change that value if we wanted to um, later on, you know, you can store it in um, book three with re the uh, read line statement so on and so forth um, let me 
see that's um pretty much all I wanted to cover for today I wanted to keep it short and simple and I know when you try to cram too much information into a learning process it can be a little bit overwhelming so um, that's all we're going to cover for today I want to thank you guys for watching please rate comment and subscribe and I hope to see you for my next video